It is commonly believed that the end of the year is the most money-making time for the film industry. Just before Christmas, many new films are released that get the most attention from the public and therefore the most profit. Studios and producers also remember the success of Grinch, Home Alone, and Santa Claus and try to use the Christmas theme to hit the jackpot. And on the whole, many such films are profitable for their creators. At the same time, there are excellent movies that the audience hates. In this video, I would like to tell you about the worst Christmas movies ever made. The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause, perhaps one of those films that shouldn't be in this rating. Before this successful and popular franchise stumbled on the third part, The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause is the nadir of the series, though Martin Short's spirited turn as Jack Frost almost saves it. The original The Santa Claus has become something of a Christmas favorite and starred Tim Allen. Tim Allen would don the suit again for 2002's The Santa Claus 2, where Santa needs to find his Mrs. Claus. But while the sequel was a success, it received a more mixed reception than the original. The final installment to date is The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. This entry sees Alan's Santa going up against Jack Frost, and while it earned considerably less than the previous two movies, it was still a solid success. The film with a budget of $12 million was able to collect $110 million, but despite its success, it was nominated for five Golden Raspberries. There's been no talk of the Santa Claus 4 in the years since, meaning the franchise is probably done. Christmas in Wonderland Three children and their busy father move from their sunny homes in Los Angeles, California to the snowy abode of Edmonton, Alberta in Canada. On a random mall trip, the family finds themselves inexplicably linked to an attempted robbery as well as the true meaning of Christmas. It's about as convoluted as it sounds. The acting is hilariously amateur, and the plot is nonsensical. One of Patrick Swayze's latest films. The film was shot in a working West Edmonton mall, and some people thought it was a commercial for the store. Meanwhile, city residents and other visitors to the supermarket knew nothing about the making of the film, and many were greatly surprised to notice that the Christmas decorations remained after the holidays were over. The film managed to raise a record $689 for the United States, and now few people remember it. Nativity 3, Dude, Where's My Donkey? Disappointingly, the movie does not follow one of the three wise men on a wild goose chase looking for their donkey and getting into all sorts of biblical misadventures. Instead, it's just a run-of-the-mill holiday romance with a convoluted amnesia subplot and random reminders that there's a missing donkey in the movie. A fantastic film that, with such a rating, managed to make good money at the box office. With a budget of about $3 million, it grossed over $11 million. When the film was released in the United Kingdom, it opened at third place, behind Interstellar and The Imitation Game. Home Sweet Home Alone. Once again, Hollywood desperately tries to catch lightning in a bottle for the sixth time with Home Sweet Home Alone, the sixth entry in the increasingly poor returns of the Home Alone franchise. Despite its talented cast and franchise appeal, Home Sweet Home Alone struggles to entertain, clumsily fumbling its core premise and needing clarification on what made the original movies so memorable. The 2021 entry is the sixth film in the Home Alone franchise. It serves as a soft reboot, introducing a new child left behind at Christmas, Max Mercer, played by the adorable and usually very charming Archie Yates. Unfortunately, poor characterization, weak structure, and some severe ethical implications plague the script, stripping the movie of what little fun it offers. Home Sweet Home Alone is an unnecessary sequel that fails to revive the franchise, lacking the fun, charm, and magic of the 1990 Christmas classic. The first trailer was released on October 12, 2021. It was met with negative responses by fans and received more than 79,000 dislikes on YouTube in the first three days of release. Judging by the estimates, audiences did not like the $15 million film, but it was released on Disney Plus and the Disney Channel. Elf Man One day, Santa leaves behind an elf helper of his to rescue the Harper family from a horrible Christmas. However, instead of the elf helping the family, they turn out to be his trainers, who have to help him control his inexplicably developed special powers. Now he must become Elf Man. 
while everyone remembers Wee Man best for the terrifying stunts he performed in Jackass, it's nice to see him branch out and try acting for a change. Unfortunately, due to the confusing plot and terrible acting, it wasn't exactly the most memorable Christmas movie ever. Audience feedback is also impressive. Pups Alone Given the huge success of Home Alone, it's not surprising that many Christmas directors and writers have tried to replicate its success by taking the original story and adding their own tweaks to it. Unfortunately, while movies centered on dogs can prove to be wholesome and draw the audiences in, Pups Alone did the opposite of that. Despite having a memorable cast, including Jennifer Love Hewitt and Rob Schneider, unfortunately, even they are unable to save the movie as fans are too distracted by its other flaws such as the uncanny valley effect of the CGI dogs. It may be one that children might enjoy, but others may want to give a miss if they're familiar with the original premise. A Christmas Story 2 A Christmas Story follows the life of Rarfi, specifically a snapshot of his childhood holiday memories. It's an incredibly wholesome, relatable, and charming movie full of memorable quotes and great acting. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for its much maligned sequel. This sequel is set five years after the first, and it's an overall sign of how commercialized the franchise has become. The sequel loses focus on the charm of the original as a genuine memoir and instead rehashes many of the same gags in a shameless attempt to cash in on nostalgia. No amount of emotional manipulation can make this movie even a fraction of as good as the original. Home Alone 4 Whereas Home Alone 3 featured a standalone plot and new characters, this film brings back several of the main characters from the first two films, including Kevin McAllister, but with all of the roles played by different actors. The plot revolves around Kevin McAllister trying to defend his future stepmother's house from his old nemesis Marv and his sidekick Vera. It was the last film that Rob Daniel directed before his subsequent retirement. Many Home Alone fans widely consider this movie the worst film in the franchise. Home Alone 4 was supposed to be a pilot movie for a potential Home Alone TV series. However, due to the movie receiving negative reviews from fans and critics, plans for a TV series ended up being cancelled. The Christmas Tree this cartoon is unique because the USA Network only aired this special once in 1991, and it was never shown again. The cruel Mrs. Mavilda runs an orphanage of miserable children, but all that changes when she hires a new assistant who is kind, compassionate, and loves Christmas. The assistant and the kids, under Mavilda's nose, enact a plan to have a truly Merry Christmas. This is the supposed premise of the movie. The Christmas Tree is one of the most poorly animated Christmas films anybody has ever seen, as the plot is practically nonsensical. However, it does appear that the actors know what they are in and act as over the top as they can, leading to an unexpectedly hilarious movie with a shocking ending. Few people have seen this movie, with only 800 ratings on IMDb. You probably shouldn't, either. Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas, and finally, the worst Christmas movie. Amazingly, it didn't even fail at the box office. Kirk Cameron quite literally playing himself decides he must show him the true meaning of Christmas. Despite its claims of over-commercialization pushing Jesus out of people's minds, this film does the exact opposite. Criticizing people for getting lost in all the materialism, it's telling that the movie is regarded as practically unwatchable for its morals. With a paltry budget of half a million dollars, the picture collected 2.7 million. Critics have also noticed the film. He was given four golden raspberries in the nomination, Worst Actor, Worst Picture, Worst Screenplay, and Worst Screen Combo. On November 20, 2014, Cameron responded to the negative reviews by posting on his Facebook page. He wrote, Help me storm the gates of Rotten Tomatoes. All of you who love saving Christmas, rated at Rotten Tomatoes right now and send the message to all the critics that we decide what movies we want our families to see. The attempt resulted in a severe backlash in which internet users traveled to the Rotten Tomatoes page and condemned the film. Three weeks after the film's release, it gained additional notoriety when it became the lowest rated film on in its bottom 100 lists. Cameron later responded to the low rating saying that it was due to a campaign on Reddit by haters and atheists to lower the film's ratings purposely 